Hi, I'm Eric Karlinski, and I'm a director on our technical marketing team here at Okta. And today what I want to talk about in this new feature video series is our, the enhancements that we've made to our LDAP integration in the past 12 months or so. Now, for those of you who don't know, our LDAP integration allows customers to integrate the Okta platform with an existing LDAP compliant directory so that you can import users that you already have into the Okta platform and allow those users to authenticate. This saves a bunch of time when you're either migrating from a directory or you're onboarding from something that already exists. Now, what we've made in terms of enhancements um, are, all comes down to what our customers have been asking for. And in the past 12 months, we've added the following functionality. The first thing we've added is scheduled import support. Now, traditionally with our LDAP integration, you could do something called just-in-time provisioning, where the first time a user logs in, will automatically import all their data into the Okta platform. Now that works well for some scenarios, but as we started to see customers with more employee-driven scenarios that are tied to LDAP, the scheduled import capability became more and more important, and that's why we've added it. The next thing that we talk about is what we call full UD support. Um, now that's Okta terminology, but what that really means is it's support for any number and any type of attribute in that directory that you can now add it to an attribute mapping so that when you provision or import those users from the directory, we can get a more rich view into the, those users' attributes. The next one we call schema discovery. And this is automatically detecting the attributes that are available or present in that connected directory so that we can simply add them to an attribute mapping and import them into Okta. And now what this looks like from an admin perspective is that instead of having to write some code or to um, do some finagling within your LDAP directory, you can just select a checkbox within the Okta admin UI to add that to the profile and then you can include that in mappings going forward. This makes it a lot more flexible and a lot less guesswork associated with configuring attribute mappings for your LDAP directory. Now the next one is auxiliary class support. And this one's a little bit specific, and for those of you who aren't LDAP experts, I'm going to explain what that means. Auxiliary class support is the ability to support a type of class object within LDAP, which is typically used to extend the default user object to include more attributes. And the reason that support for auxiliary classes is important is because that's the only way you can get a full view into all the attributes associated with the user within LDAP. So now that Okta supports auxiliary classes for imports and writing back to LDAP as well, now we can read in that entire user object and every attribute associated with that user and make that available in the Okta platform. And the last enhancement I want to talk about is support for incremental imports. This is the ability to import only the things that have changed since your last import bump. So instead of importing everything every time, which is not very efficient, you can import just the deltas or the changes that have occurred since the last time you run an import. What this means is it, it, the process for importing users is less bandwidth intensive, it performs better, it takes a lot less time, so you can schedule it more frequently and keep Okta more up to date more easily. So in aggregate, this makes our LDAP integration much closer to what we can do with AD today and makes it generally able to support more use cases that are important to our customers. All right, now I want to talk about some best practices associated with our LDAP integration. And for LDAP integration, these best practices are all about performance. The first thing I want to talk about are how to use the different import types. What we typically recommend or what we typically see is that the scheduled imports are used for employees, whereas the just-in-time provisioning method that I talked about before still plays a large role in those customer-facing deployments. The reason for that is because in typically when, when customers are stored in LDAP, there are a large number of customers, but there's not necessarily a high frequency of activity. So what you want to do is automatically create those users in Okta the first time they log in so that you're only creating accounts for those active users. This helps you perform better and also helps you only use and consume the Okta licensing that you need in order to support your customers. All right, and the last recommendation I would make in terms of performance is for your LDAP directory, make sure that paging is enabled. Now, this is on by default for some LDAP directories. For others, it's not on by default. But the reason that it's important is because this allows the Okta agent to process those users that it's running imports against in batches instead of all at once. This uses a lot less virtual memory on, your, on the machine that's running your agent and allows things to be more streamlined and allows Okta to kind of process them in parallel instead of processing them in series. So it's a lot more efficient, but it's a change that you have to make on the LDAP directory side, not on the Okta side. It's just something to be aware of. All right, but enough talking. Let's see this in action. 
All right, so let's take a look at some of those new LDAP enhancements in action. Um, so we're going to start right here on the settings page for one of my LDAP integrations that I have configured in my test org. And I have um, just an LDAP server that's running in AWS right now. So um, the first thing you'll notice is on the import settings page uh, under the LDAP directory, you have options for schedule, scheduling an import. This is a new feature where you can schedule an import to run every six hours, five hours, every couple days, etc. Previously, previously, you were dependent on just doing JIT-based or just-in-time based provisioning, but we gave you more controls there. Another thing that you'll notice is some settings here for incremental import. This is called the maximum clock skew, and what this is really uh, helping you do is um, our incremental import imports only the changes that have happened since the last import. And this is dependent on a timestamp that is stored within Okta and is mirrored in your LDAP directory. The problem is, this, um, depending on the clock or time with, on your LDAP directory, it may not be the same as the one in the Okta service. So you, in order to account for that, you can basically um, configure a, a grace period here. So you can have a third, up to 60 minutes of um, clock skew and account for that using this setting. The last new thing that you'll notice here, which isn't really a part of these enhancements, but it's also relatively new, so I'll highlight it, is this lifecycle settings um, uh, section here. And what this gives you the ability to do is um, essentially map your business process um, to, um, to the Okta uh, lifecycle management product. So when we import users from the LDAP directory, we also import their status. So if they've been deactivated in LDAP, we understand that. However, customers were asking us for more control over what action Optics should take in that circumstance. So the, de the default is when we import a deactivated account, we'll deactivate your Oct user as well. But now that we have new, the new suspend state, we want to give you the option to suspend a user in that circumstance or just to ignore it altogether. This, this one here is usually um, used when you have HR or AD or something else as your master, profile master. Um, and then you're just using LDAP to augment or supplement some of the attributes there. So more controls here, and you can use these to map to your business process. Okay, so that's the, the first couple of um, enhancements there. The other two enhancements, uh, the next two are around schema discovery and uh, support for auxiliary classes. So to, to take a look at these, let's go to the LDAP configuration page. <clears throat> now, um, this... There are a couple of new items here that I'm going to highlight, and the first one is auxiliary object class. This is the ability to specify which auxiliary object classes are supported with your configuration or within your LDAP directory. Now, let me show you exactly how this works. So I'm going to go to the profile editor, and I'm going to go to directories, and using this LDAP profile editor, I'm going to add an attribute. Now, what I want to do um, for this user, my whole goal here is to import a new attribute on the user profile, which is called home directory. This specifies where they log into or where they store their files on, on a local Unix system. So I'm going to go ahead and type home here, and I'm looking for home directory, and I don't see it here. And this is because I have not added the, the re requisite auxiliary class to Okta. So Okta not, doesn't know to look for that. So what does that actually mean? If you look in the LDAP directory, here's my user. Um, it has an object class here called POSIX account, and you can see it's marked as an auxiliary class. And what that does is really adds three or four more attributes or more bits of data about that user to the user profile. So this is often used by LDAP administrators to specify roles or specify uh, accounts um, that have a specific purpose and add more data um, for that purpose. In this case, I, I'm storing the home directory, a GID number, and some other information so that this user account can be used to log into a Unix server. Okay, so because this is the POSIX account auxiliary class contains these attributes and that's where the home directory attribute is that I want, I need to make a modification on the Okta side to, um, to my LDAP settings. I'm just going to navigate right back to that configuration page, and you can see that I have an auxiliary object class here, but it's not the right one. So I'm going to change this to POSIX account, and I'll leave everything else the same here. And I'm going to go ahead and verify that my settings are right just by choosing a test user, test the configuration. That works fine. I'm going to update the configuration. All right, configuration's updated. I have my new POSIX account there. 
And now if I go to my profile editor and go to directories and LDAP and go to add that attribute now, I should see it show up here and you can see home directory is now there and it says it's labeled as the absolute path to home directory. So I'm gonna add that, save it. And now I have it in my app user schema. You can see it, where is it? It's been added to my app user schema in this profile. There it is. Okay, so I'm not quite done because what I also need to do is map this to a, an Okta user attribute. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that quickly now. I'm gonna go to the Okta user profile, configure uh, mappings here. I'm gonna map it to this Unix home directory. So profile editor. Um, directories, LDAP, mappings, and then on, on the inbound or import flow, I'm going to ensure that I map the app user dot home directory attribute to the Unix home directory attribute in the Okta user profile. All right, I'm going to run another import here. You can see that incremental import is a new option here. Incremental imports just pulls in the data or users that have changed or updated since your last import, whereas full import resynchronizes everybody. So we're going to go ahead and do the incremental import in this case. And this new user should show up here. So I should be able to search for POSIX, that was his name, or the account name. There he is. I'm going to go ahead and confirm that assignment, confirm. And there you go. He's imported into Okta. And just to confirm that this worked as we expected, we're going to go find that user, Adam Amar and take a look at his profile, and we can see that the home directory there is pulled in and it matches exactly the attribute that's in home directory and LDAP. So the, our support for auxiliary classes just helps our customers support all the attributes that are important from their LDAP directory, pull those into Okta and view them just like any other attribute from any other source. All right, and I wanna close out here with just a couple of the frequently asked questions that we hear around our LDAP integration, especially with these new enhancements. And the first one is, which LDAP directories does Okta support? Now this is a tough question. I'll try to answer it as best I can. The reason it's a tough question is because LDAP v3 is a broad protocol or a broad specification. And there are a lot of directories out there that implement LDAP. And while we theoretically should work with any of those directories because we are compliant with LDAP v3 ourselves, we obviously can't test against all those directories in our test environment. So we have a list on our support site of the LDAP directories that we test against on a regular basis with every release. But we also say that it, while it should work with your LDAP directory, it may not or may not have been tested. So if that happens, just contact support and let us know that you're having issues integrating with your LDAP directory and we can help you with that. The other, one that, the other uh, question that we get a lot is, Okay, I get that Okta can integrate with my LDAP directory, but what I really want to do is get rid of my LDAP directory altogether. Can Okta help me with that? And that's another really good question because we do have a new feature that's coming very soon called an LDAP interface. The LDAP interface is going to allow you to essentially, Okta will serve as that LDAP directory for application authentication. So if you just have an app that needs to do authentication and simple authentication against LDAP directory, and that's all you're using your LDAP directory for, then Okta will be able to replace that with our new LDAP interface. That said, for some complex deployments or for deployments that are used for device management or device authentication, you're typically, or for uh, deployments that are very large, that you have a lot of servers dedicated to and that perform really well today, that's something we would recommend you keep your LDAP directory in place, continue to maintain that, and integrate that with Okta to get those users into the Okta platform using all the enhancements of our LDAP integration that I just discussed. So for some scenarios, the LDAP interface will make sense. And for some other scenarios, this LDAP integration pattern makes a lot more sense. So that's all the questions we typically get. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask them on our community. And that's, that's all I wanted to share. So I'll, I'll leave you with this. LDAP has been around for 20 years, but these LDAP uh, enhancements are a recognition that some protocols just work really well, and there's no reason to reinvent the wheel if you don't have to. So that's why we've invested in these enhancements and we really are confident and we hope that these enhancements will help meet more of our customers' use cases and scenarios and make them more successful. Thanks.